Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos once again. This is the TD5 and non-start video sections. And basically, this is part two. We've taken your suggestions and read through all of what you've had to say. And uh, some of the uh, suggestions are spot on. So we're going to follow through. Okay, and get on with what you've suggested. Now, the most popular could be the pressure fuel regulator or the fuel pressure regulator, should I say, and the fuel pump. They're the first things to look at. As Disco Man says down here, it's a bad fuel pump. Well, we don't know unless we check it. So I think I'll give you a little reply there, Disco Man. I've replied to almost everybody. And uh, this is my answer. So, of course, fat fingers today. Now, basically, yeah, we're going to go for that first. We're going to check it both electrically and for pressure. Right, so Schematic says it has a fuel pump relay, which is R103. And this is triggered by the ECU, which is the blue and uh, purple tracer on connection CO573 in pin 9, okay. When the relay is energized, it will allow power to go through the white with a purple tracer to the fuel pump. Right, so we'll look for it R1 we have up here. Okay, and we have a tester here which makes it quite easy to access and test the relay. Right, so you can also see that oil has crept in almost everywhere on this. Not, I think it's going to be a problem here. But we'll plug the tester in and we'll have a look. We also have the facility to be able to put the original relay back into place to see if it's actually faulty. Now, from the ECU, from the black plug, if you look at connector CO658 pin 5, you'll see that that is the signal wire which tells the um, relay to trigger. Okay, it's a trigger wire, basically. Okay, so this will be up here. It's blue with a purple tracer. We always pin stuff from the back when we're doing diagnostics, never from the front. We can also test the load. We can test it here, or we can directly test it at the relay, which is probably better, actually. Okay, so from our connector and wire, from the ECU, we go to pin 86. When it's energized, it goes to earth, pulls the switch down from 30. Main feed goes to 87, and then it goes off to the fuel pump. Basically, you always want to check voltage under load, so the pump will be running. And we can check each one of these pins to either see we have an earth, which will have no voltage or very little, or the battery voltage. Right, so pump relay, it switches on 30 to 87, and then you see connector C0578, pin four, white and purple, will go to the fuel pump direct. Right, so here's our fuel pump, and you can see a connector C0114, pin one, is our white with a trace of wire, which is purple. Uh, that runs the pump and it goes off to an earth. The other two wires are just for the ascender gauge on your dashboard. Right, so here's the plug and you can see the power wire very clearly and also the earth. Okay, now we leave those in place and when we test them we'll pin them from the back. Ironically, you'll know the fuel pump is working because you'll be able to hear it. Okay, we do need to check the earths for any voltage drop. That's earth to earth. And with checking any connectors, of course, we want to pin it from the back with a needle fine probe like so. Okay, we can easily get a reading that way. Fuel tank earth, as you see, is black. Connector C0114, pin four. It goes to a connector 0810. Up here is your connector, and this is where the fuel pump earth is actually bolted to. So they need to be clean, obviously. And it also has, if you can see, A3, which is a splice, which could cause problems. Okay, so first off, we're going to take the UBAT, or the battery voltage, 
and make sure that's good for a reference and we'll have to keep coming back to it because the battery will get flat very quickly running the pump. We're on 12.56 volts which is about a half a discharge battery. So when I go and turn the ignition on you'll see that it will drop even further. During the testing it will drop quite considerably so keep this in mind when you're testing. You might not be losing volts, it might be the fact that the battery is going flat. Right, so my multimeter is a big posh one, but it is the same as any multimeter. It has a good reading, and we're on a 12 volt DC. Right, so we've got about 12.2 volts, and we're going to check the relays for power. Okay, basically there is a sequence where you turn the ignition on and pump your accelerator pedal five times first and what you'll see that it will have a repetitive cycle. The, the mill light or the malfunction indicator light or your engine warning light will keep flashing. This will run a bleeding sequence but it will keep switching the pump on and switching it off. So you get a, a longer check time. Right, so I'm going to check each one of these pins and get a reading off the relay. The relay will be working and I'll get an earth and I should get three power supplies. Educate yourself on how relays work but basically if pin 30 and 87 do not have power the relay might not be working or fuse 10 which is 30 amp might have been blown. Okay so at pin 85 there's an earth and there was no voltage. The next one there is voltage and we should expect to see close to battery voltage on the next three. Okay, so this is okay. The relay is working and perhaps it's not sending as much voltage as it should. So I'm going to check the battery again, see what sort of power we have. We're losing about 0.12 of a volt somewhere in this line. All right, so if we have no power at pin 86 of the relay, then it could be down to either broken wire or the ECU is not sending a signal. So you have to make sure that we have a bleed sequence that's operating. And then check on this wire here. We're using the schematics for this vehicle. Always make sure that the electrical uh, diagram is right for your vehicle. But basically what we're looking for is 12 volts out of this wire. Okay, so if once I've got a contact, right, okay, there we have it, we have 12 volts, okay. Okay, so in the back, under the carpet, you have a plate here, I'm sure some of you know where the pump position is. If you don't, then basically you have to take the plate off. Now, the worst way to check this pump is to use the earth and the live connector like so because you need a better earth, a reliable earth, and then check what sort of voltage drop you have, okay, which is minimal, okay, so the earth here isn't too bad. It could be better, but basically when we go to check the voltage of the feed supply to the pump with the pump running, you should be able to hear it from that position, you will see that you have a voltage. Now, as I said before, the battery is dropping in voltage, okay? This is why we did an earth uh, voltage drop test, first of all. Okay, so we have 11.72 volts, and that's what the battery power is. Now, what I have here, just out of interest, is a clamp. Now, I can see the motor working here by using a waveform meter, okay? Now this is zero volts at the moment and uh, when the pump switches on, remember we've cycled this, so we've done a five pumps on the pedal with the ignition on and the mill light will be flashing, it will then come up something like this. Okay, now this is um, the pump working. Okay, now this is actually not very good. If you look, I'm moving the cursors between two identical points and there should be eight peaks if we count them. Now the peaks are very uneven and there are um, drops, okay? Now this indicates that the pump is actually worn. The waveform should be a lot better than this. So any professional who's uh, watching this, and I know you watch them, you can use a waveform meter to see how the pump is worn. Okay, this is part 2A, and this is our uh, 
blue D2 that we're having problems with. Right, we're looking for pressure and what the pumps are pushing out now. And what it says here in the manual is the pump is a two-stage electric submersible pump. There's two pressures. A low pressure is about 0.5 bar and high pressure is at 4 bar. Well, I can tell you that the high pressure is the feed to the pressure regulator on the engine. Now, we need some type of test equipment. And I've got a Bergen kit here, which is, to be honest with you, I wouldn't advise buying it because the adapters are a pain in the backside. And it took me a while to work out which one of these adapters would fit. They don't really screw into each other, all right? But we have one that will work. Basically, you want a pressure gauge that is up to 150 PSI. And what we're going to do is screw it in where the um, fuel temperature sender or uh, sensor is okay on the pressure regulator you can see it here this is where the inlet is on the back end of the pressure regulator and this is your pressure regulator to re maintain the pressure in the cylinder head for the injectors right so that will be at four bar so basically the temperature sensor okay is here and we can unscrew that and then screw our fitting in I'm not actually 100% sure what the thread rating is, but I will tell you if you're interested in either the comments below or another video. But basically, I have something with a washer on to seal it and a decent thread. Now, the, this has to be a very good fit. We're looking at pressures of 4 bar upwards, so we don't want any leaks while we're testing. Just make sure that you know that diesel is actually not very nice, so wear gloves when you're... Um, testing with this I've got barrier cream on at the moment right now the gauge is set and I'm going to turn the ignition on first of all because the pump will run for about 30 seconds before it switches off okay now that primes the system you can see that's raised but look at the pressure that's not even one bar of pressure at this point it should be four bar now we're suspecting that the pump on the high pressure side is foobard all right now, I'm just going to make sure that there's um, no air in the system by bleeding this out a little bit. I've now reset this onto the um, pedal. You pump it five times, like I've said, and this will keep cycling it for um, about two minutes, okay? Now, you can see that there's um, diesel coming through all right, so there's no air in there at all. There's a diesel flow, okay? What's great about this community is that people are very helpful and I'd like to thank some of you guys who have given me information. Now this is the fuel system for the TD5, which basically has um, a low pressure two filter. It then goes to back to the uh, pump and then it goes off to the pressure regulator on the cylinder head. Okay, this is how it works. It then returns via a uh, cooler to the filter. There is also a uh, leak bag if you like, a connector here, pipe which goes back to the tank. Now in the connector itself, now just to remove the pipe, and uh, these are special connector pliers which squeeze the um, fitting in and then you can pull it off. Right, now this piece here, 19 mil spanner and undo it. Now the filter heads can cause problems. As you can see here, this one returns back to uh, number nine. Okay, that's to the pump. There is a valve in here, which can block up or it can fail. Now, this one here has failed. There is no um, leeway either way, either sucking it or blowing it. It does not let any pressure out. Okay, so we think this is actually Fubard, which could indeed cause a problem. The other problem I noticed while I was in the um, pump area is this pipe is kinked. Okay, you can see that there. I'm just going to pop this out. This is what's happened. Somebody's had this pipe off at some point and it's kinked the pipe. You can see how the action is as the pipe goes back. All right, which is not ideal because this is the high pressure pipe. I'll show you that on the diagram in a minute, but the kink is also a restriction. Just to show you on the uh, workshop manual, number three, 
look down on the legend hb feed green so that is indeed the high pressure pipe to the pressure regulator I don't think this is going to cause a problem, but I would like to hear your opinions below of what you think, whether we should change this pipe. Right, the other thing is the uh, pressure regulator we have actually changed on the vehicle. I'll do a video tutorial showing people how to do it if they're interested, but we know this unit is not a problem. However, this filter head, I'm very concerned about that. Even at the price of it, which is about 80 to 90 pounds, I think we're going to have to get this to pieces and change it basically the valve in there is solid and the head is rotten which possibly could let air in the one thing that's convincing me that the pump is worn is the way this uh, waveform signature is showing basically the recommended amperage is between 11 and 13 amps and it's making about eight this to me uh, is an indication that the pump is well worn